Welcome to a screencast on spontaneity of chemical reactions. The objectives of this screencast are to describe the three main thermodynamic quantities, which are enthalpy, entropy, and Gibbs free energy, to define how these quantities are related and how they affect the spontaneity of chemical reactions, and to interpret these quantities to predict reaction spontaneity. Now, first of all, what makes a reaction or a process spontaneous? Well, a spontaneous process is one that occurs naturally. In other words, it does not require the continual input of energy from some external source. For example, riding a bicycle downhill is spontaneous. You don't need to keep pedaling to make the bicycle move downhill. You just need to point it down, uh, downhill and, of course, uh, stay upright. Now, on the other hand, a non-spontaneous process is one that does not occur naturally, and a non-spontaneous process requires the continual input of energy from an external source to keep it going. For example, riding a bicycle uphill is non-spontaneous. This doesn't mean you can't do it, but in order to ride uphill, you have to continually pedal, you have to continually put energy into the bicycle to make it move uphill. And if you stop pedaling, you stop moving uphill. Now, when we deal with spontaneity of chemical reactions, there are several factors that are involved, and the first is energy. And chemists usually deal with energy aspects of chemical reactions via enthalpy or enthalpy changes. And enthalpy is symbolized by the letter H. Enthalpy changes are delta H. And enthalpy change delta H is technically the heat flow at constant pressure. Now, we can determine delta H values for different uh, chemical processes. For example, let's use the combustion of methane. And we can determine the delta H for this process either by appropriate calorimetry experiments or we can calculate it using tabulated values. And the delta H, the enthalpy change for the combustion of methane, is negative 890.5 kilojoules. Now note this is a negative value, and a negative delta H value means the process uh, is exothermic and that energy is given off when this process takes place. Now, we can calculate this value by using the appropriate formula and the appropriate tab tabulated values. So the delta H for any chemical reaction is the sum of the delta H of formation of the products minus the sum of delta H of formation of the reactants, where all of these substances are multiplied by their stoichiometric coefficients. Uh, delta H of va uh, formation values are found in tables. And so if we look up the delta H of formation of the reactants, methane and oxygen, and the delta H of formation of the products, CO2 and H2O, and then we subtract uh, the reactants from the products. So negative 393.5 is CO2, two times negative 285.8 is two times H2O minus negative 74.6, which is methane, and also minus two times zero, which is oxygen. Note these are in kilojoules, and we get a total of negative 890.5 kilojoules calculated from the delta H of formation values for this reaction. Now, if we do this for lots and lots and lots of reactions and look for general trends, what we find is that there's a general trend in nature for energy to disperse or to spread out, or for a molecular system to move spontaneously from a state of higher energy to a state of lower energy. Um, the reaction of methane combusting is one example. A simpler example is if we have a high temperature substance and we put it in contact with a lower temperature substance, heat will flow from the higher temperature substance to the lower temperature substance until both are at the same temperature. And here we have heat or energy spreading out. Now, this is a general trend. This 
Not all systems uh, will have energy disperse, but that's what m usually happens. And since energy tends to disperse and systems tend to have their enthalpy decrease, if a reaction has a negative value for delta H, if delta H is less than zero, in other words, if the reaction is exothermic, then this is a favorable contributor to spontaneity. Um, a reaction that has a negative delta H, we would say is enthalpy favored. This doesn't guarantee the reaction or process is spontaneous, but it's a helpful or favorable factor. Now, another factor to consider when we look at spontaneity of reaction is the matter aspects or matter changes of chemical reactions. And chemists tend to deal with matter changes for chemical reactions via something called entropy or entropy change. And S is the symbol for entropy. Very, very loosely, it's a measure of quote-unquote randomness or quote-unquote disorder. Uh, entropy change is a ratio of heat, Q, to temperature, T. Um, there will be a screencast dealing with a more specific definition or way of looking at entropy and entropy change. But for now, we'll just kind of loosely deal with it as a me uh, measure of randomness or disorder. And like with enthalpy change, we can determine entropy changes for reactions as well. Uh, they can sometimes be determined experimentally. That tends to be kind of challenging. But we can also calculate delta S or entropy change values from appropriate tables. And for the combustion of methane reaction, it turns out that delta S is negative 154.7 joules per Kelvin. And in this case, the delta S value is less than zero, which means that the disorder of the system decreases as the process takes place. So in this particular case, the disorder decreases since delta S is a negative value. Now to calculate uh, delta S values from tabulated standard entropies, we have a very similar formula to the one we used for delta H calculations. Delta S of a reaction is the sum of the entropy of the products minus the sum of the entropy of the reactants multiplied by the appropriate coefficients. And we have tabulated values of standard entropies. And notice they are not delta S's, they are just S's. Uh, so if we do the same thing uh, as we did with delta H, but now using S values, we're going to take the CO2 value, add it to twice, time, uh, twice the H2O value, and then subtract from that the CH4 and the twice the O2 values. Here are the numbers. You can check the table and see that they're the correct values. And that works out to be negative 242.9 joules per Kelvin as indicated. Now, if we do a lot of chemical processes, a lot of reactions, and look for general trends in matter changes, what we find is that there's a general trend in nature for matter to disperse or spread out as well. And this means it's a general trend for a molecular system to move spontaneously from a state of lower disorder to a state of higher disorder. And an example of this would be if we have a uh, container with a bunch of molecules of gas that are here represented by green spheres on the left and gas that's represented by yellow spheres on the right. This is a relatively organ organized or ordered situation. All of the green molecules are on the left. All of the uh, yellow ones are on the right. And it's less ordered if the two gases mix together and we have some yellow molecules on the left and some yellow molecules on the right. And same idea for the green ones. So this is a naturally, uh, uh, this is what naturally tends to occur. So we can uh, be a little more explicit here. Since matter tends to disperse and systems tend to increase their quote unquote disorder, if a reaction has a positive delta S, in other words, if the entropy change is a positive value, then the entropy of the system is increasing and this is a favorable contributor to spontaneity of reaction. So similarly to with delta H, uh, if the delta S of a reaction is positive, 
This doesn't guarantee the reaction will take place or is spontaneous, but it's a favorable contributor. So let's summarize for the reaction we've looked at so far, which is the combustion of methane, which has delta H of negative 890.5 kilojoules. That's a negative number, so this is an enthalpy favored process. And it has a delta S of negative 242.9 joules per Kelvin, and that's a negative number, and so this is not entropy favored. So energy decreasing uh, in the system is favored, in, uh, and this is an enthalpy favored process, but the disorder also decreasing, that's not a favorable condition, and so this is not entropy favored. So one of the factors is favorable, the other factor is not. How do we tell if the reaction is overall spontaneous or not? If both factors were favorable or neither was favorable, we'd be able to tell this easily. But if one is and one isn't, then what do we do? And what we do is we use an idea that was first developed by the American chemist Josiah Willard Gibbs. And in fact, uh, this, other, this new quantity is named after him. It's called Gibbs free energy. It's symbolized by G. And Gibbs free energy is defined as enthalpy minus temperature times entropy, or G equals H minus TS. Now, we will generally deal with the circumstance of temperature being constant, and if temperature is constant, then the change of G, or delta G, for a reaction is equal to the change of H, or delta H, for the reaction minus the temperature times delta S or change of S for the reaction. And it turns out that if a reaction is spontaneous, that means that the delta G for the reaction is less than zero. Or conversely, if delta G for a reaction is less than zero, that means that the reaction is spontaneous. So this allows us to determine whether a reaction is spontaneous or not. And uh, for the particular situation that we've just dealt with, the delta G equals delta H minus T delta S calculation. We can use uh, the values that we already know. Delta H of reaction is negative 890.5 kilojoules. Temperature, let's say we're going to do this at standard temperature or room temperature of 25 degrees uh, Celsius, which is 298.2 Kelvin. And do note this equation is only, only, only true if we have a temperature in Kelvin. And then since we did our delta H in kilojoules, then we should do our delta S in kilojoules per Kelvin to make sure that the units agree. And here Kelvin times kilojoules per Kelvin, the Kelvin will cancel. We'll have a kilojoules value and then another kilojoules value. That turns out to be negative 818.1 kilojoules. And so since delta G is a negative number, that means the reaction is spontaneous under these conditions, at least uh, standard uh, room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius conditions. Now, one more thing to note is we can calculate or determine a delta G as a sum of a delta H and a minus T delta S, but we can also determine a delta G from delta G of formation values. So we have tabulated values of enthalpy uh, of formation, we have tabulated values of entropies, and we have tabulated values of uh, standard, what are called standard Gibbs free energies of formation, delta G sub F. And same equation as we've seen before, sum of the delta G of formation of products minus sum of delta G of formation of reactants multiplied by the appropriate stoichiometric coefficients. So in this particular case, uh, the CO2 is negative uh, 394.4 kilojoules. H2O liquid is negative 237.1 kilojoules, gets multiplied by 2. Subtract delta G of formation of CH4, which is negative 50.5. And then delta G of formation of oxygen is 0. And that turns out to be negative 818.1 kilojoules. The same value as we got using delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So to summarize in general about our three thermodynamic quantities and what they mean, H 
or enthalpy is our measure of energy and energy tends to disperse and delta H of a process being negative or the process being exothermic is a favorable condition or favorable contributor to spontaneity. S is a measure of entropy or matter and matter tends to disperse and delta S for a reaction or process greater than zero is a favorable factor or favorable contributor to spontaneity. And then Gibbs free energy G tends to decrease and delta G of a process or reaction less than zero means the process is spontaneous or for a spontaneous process delta G will be less than zero and then of course delta G, delta H, and delta S are related by this equation. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, where T is temperature and T has to be in Kelvin. And that is it for the spontaneity of chemical reaction screencast.